Good morning. It looks like we have an excellent crowd this morning, both in quantity and in quality. I want to take this opportunity to welcome every one of you to our worship service here at the Church of Christ at Bobby Branch. If you're visiting with us this morning, we want you to know that you are our honored guest. And if you are visiting, we would like you to fill out one of the visitor's cards that you'll find in the rack on the, uh, behind the pew in front of you. You may leave that on the seat or in the collection. Uh, well, we passed no collection this morning, but uh, just leave it on the seat and we'll have a record of your visit with us this morning. I'd like to remind everyone of the times of our services. Following this uh, service this morning, we will have Bible classes for everyone, for all ages, starting at 10:15, and those classes will be over at 11 o'clock. We also meet on Sunday evenings at 6 and Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Our Monday morning Bible class will meet tomorrow at 9. Uh, further, regarding our uh, visitors, uh, we are glad that you're here, and we would like you to know that if you're interested in knowing more about this congregation and our work here, you can ask me or any of our members, and uh, we will see that someone will answer whatever questions that you might have. If you're worshiping with us this morning remotely, uh, we are glad to have you tuning in. We would invite you to worship with us in person, though, whenever you possibly can. We have a lengthy list of general announcements. Uh, first of all, we would uh, uh, want to rejoice to announce that uh, Tucker and Taylor Glenn were baptized after services this past Wednesday night. There will be a ladies' day coming up. Uh, this is uh, March the 20th, that's a Saturday at nine o'clock. Uh, Lori Boyd will be speaking at that. Uh, again, we would like to say that there will be no meal at that event due to the pandemic. Youth news, uh, during the Bible Bowl uh, season this year, grades five through 12 will meet for study in room six and seven for Sunday morning and Wednesday evening Bible classes. The Bible Bowl will be held here at Bobby Branch. Uh, be here if you're going to participate in that by 145. Also, there's a spring youth retreat planning and form collection meeting right after class this morning. Uh, you're asked to bring all notarized forms and the $50 fee to that meeting and that will be in rooms six and seven. Helping edify youth, the Hay meeting will be today uh, uh, here at 4.30. An update on the spring youth retreat, uh, the sign-up sheets for the youth, uh, are, well, the sign-up sheets are on the youth and the yellow bulletin boards in the lobby. Uh, that event is March 12th through the 14th. That's next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Short Mountain Bible Camp for Bobby Branch is May 30th through June the 4th. This is the first Sunday of the month, and because it's the first Sunday, Visitation Team 1 will meet after services this evening. That's Ken Martin's team. Uh, as we announced a couple of times previously, uh, there have been several uh, have asked to be involved in that program. Your names have been added to uh, those teams uh, on the list that's on the bulletin board in the lobby. If you've ever been involved in the visitation program, please see the list because uh, I want to remind everyone that 
your name might still be on that, and if you don't want it to be, please let me know and we'll, we'll take care of that. Next weekend is Spring Forward. So get up Sunday morning next weekend at 2 o'clock. That's the official time for the change. And fix your clock. Our scripture reading this morning will be Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. Our first song is number 756. We do have a guest speaker this morning, and Brother Tony will introduce him at the appropriate time. May we stand as we sing this first song. We'll sing all four verses. <clears throat> sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his song will be number 515, 515. We'll sing all three verses. <clears throat>
you join me in prayer? Merciful God, loving Heavenly Father, we are thankful that through your blessings, we are able to prosper and do many good things. And Father, especially this morning, we're glad that we are able to assemble together as brethren and to be encouraged, admonished, and instructed through your word this day. And thank you for the one who proclaimed that word. Father, we are thankful that each day we, we have an abundance and we know that you are the source of all that is good and we thank you for that. Father, we realize that there are many of our number who are not able to be with us through sickness or some type of infirmity and we pray, Father, for healing for them that they may be able to recover and they may be able to once again enjoy the, uh, the normalcy of life. Father, we pray also for those families who have lost loved ones and Father, we pray that they may be comforted for we know for the the sadness and the sorrow that surrounds uh, surrounds all of us whenever a loved one departs, and we pray for their comfort. Father, we pray for those who are in positions of leadership at all levels, and Father, we pray that we might be able to live a, a quiet and peaceful life. Father, especially we pray for those who lead and shepherd the flock of your people. We pray that they may that they may have understanding, that they may have knowledge, they may have wisdom, and they may have courage to do what is right in all situations. Father, we're thankful for each and every soul here this day, and we pray that we may do our part to encourage and to build up one another by our presence here today. We're thankful that we can sing songs about heaven and about your greatness, knowing that one day we'll be, we will be able to enjoy those things. Father, we pray that you would increase our faith Father, we pray that you would forgive us when we sin and help us that we might not sin. And Father, we ask that you would help us to live so that we can look forward to the coming of Jesus again and that we can dwell with you and all the heavenly host in heaven. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The invitation song we'll use this morning will be number 29, All to Jesus I Surrender. And now as we prepare our minds to partake of the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 511. 511. <clears throat> we'll sing In all three verses. All we come to
this time in our worship service, we do set aside this period of time to commemorate and to partake of the Lord's Supper. If, as you entered the building this morning, you were not able to pick up one of the communion packets, if you will raise your hand, we'll have one of our ushers to bring you one of those at this time. To prepare our minds to partake of the Lord's Supper, I would ask if you would, if you have your Bibles, to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We'll read verses 23 through 28. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he, betrayed, he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This is the cup, the New Testament, in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat of this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. I ask you if you would please let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our Father, we chart in heaven, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to worship you. And fathers, we do set aside this time to partake of the Lord's Supper. We pray, Father, that for the next few moments we will put our minds away from all those worldly things and the other things of the day, that we will concentrate on your son's sacrifice on the cruel cross at Calvary. This time as we partake of the bread, which represents his body nailed to that cross, we pray, Father, that we will be mindful of his sacrifice for us on the cruel cross. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. ask if you would please bow with me one more time. Our Father which art in heaven, as we are about to partake of this fruit of the vine, again Father we pray that you'll find our minds concentrating on your son's sacrifice. And as we partake of this fruit of the vine which represents his blood shed upon that cross, again Father our minds should be there and we pray that we'll always be mindful of his sacrifice for our opportunity for salvation. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. The scripture today comes from Matthew 33 or 633. I'll be reading the New King James Version. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. My privilege this morning to introduce our speaker, Brother Brandon Blackwell, who is a student at Memphis School of Preaching. Uh, he has just about completed his first year, and he is now going to be, uh, he's also preaching some at the Antioch Church of Christ in Antioch, Tennessee. He is the son of Brother Don and Sherry, Sister Sherry Blackwell, 
Uh, Brother Dom was supposed to hold our gospel meeting here in person, but as many of you know, he was able to do so by means of the uh, uh, virtual meeting this past year. But I think it's wonderful that we can have such great young men who are training to preach the gospel for their life, and uh, so thankful to have Brandon with us today without taking any more of his time. Brother Brandon, would you come preach for us? Good morning. It is always a blessing and a privilege to be gathered together with God's people. I appreciate so very much the opportunity I have to be here today and get to worship with y'all. Y'all have all been so very friendly, and I appreciate that so very much. I believe this is my first time ever coming to visit this congregation. As was just mentioned, I think my dad has been here on multiple occasions and spoken here before, and he told me about what a great congregation y'all are, and he wanted me to send his regards to y'all. But I am glad that I have the opportunity to be here today and meet you all in person and get to worship with y'all. As was mentioned, I am a student at the Memphis School of Preaching. I'm in the first year. We're in the third quarter now. It is going by very quickly in one way, but in another way, it's going by very slow. <laughs> it's a lot of work. They keep us busy, but I am thankful to be there. And y'all all help make that possible through the financial support, through the prayers. And I want to thank y'all for that. It is very much appreciated. I'm glad I get to be here today to thank y'all in person. And I just ask as I continue to go through my time there and the remainder of the time I have left, that you please keep me in your prayers. There is a story about a man who was always worried. This man could not eat. This man could not sleep. This man could not work without worrying. This is what consumed him. This is all he could think about. His mind was constantly consumed with his troubles and all the things that were going on in his life. Now, one day a friend of his came to visit him. And his friend noticed that he didn't seem to be as worried. So he asked him, he said, what changed in your life? What has happened to not make you worry so much? He said, I have hired someone to worry for me. Now, that sounds like a strange idea, and his friend was rather taken back by this. He said, you've hired someone to worry for you? How much does that cost? That must be expensive. He said it costs 100000 a year. Now, his friend was just absolutely stunned at this point. He said, 100000 a year? You don't have that kind of money. How are you going to pay that? He said, I don't know. I let him worry about that. Friends and brethren, the year 2020 was a very hard year. By show of hands, how many people are glad to see that year gone and done with? That looks about definitely over half the room. It was a very hard year. It was a year of trials. It was a year of great distress. It was a year of great worry. In the year 2020, of course, the first thing that comes to our minds is COVID-19. Many people lost loved ones. Some of our favorite events were canceled. People had to quarantine. Places shut down. It has caused concern in the eyes of many for the church. Many people were concerned about our constitutional rights being affected because of it. Our year 2020 was greatly affected by the coronavirus. You may remember in the year 2020, there was wildfires that took place in California that killed over 30 people. In the year 2020, there was the Black Lives Matter protest. People were shot and killed. Places were burned down and destroyed. Our law enforcement has been under attack. In the year 2020, of course, we had the election. Many people are not happy with how that went. People feel as though there's a great deal of dishonesty that took place. What's the point? The point is it was a hard year. It was a year of great trial and great distress. And we are glad to see that year gone and over with. But the truth of the matter is that nothing magical happens from December 31st to January 1st. Just because we are in the new year 
Things have not changed. We know that. We're in March now, and guess what? COVID-19 still exists, doesn't it? Though we might wish it didn't, it's still here. We still have political problems. We still have financial problems. We still have family problems. We're here in March, and what do we see? We still have problems. Overall, 2020 was a hard year, and we hope that this year will be better. But so far, we still experience problems. So how do we, as Christians, deal with this? How do we stay focused and keep our minds where they ought to be? Friends, may I recommend to you that this world is not our home. We sing the song, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. What is the point? As children of God, we have something far better to look forward to. This life may be hard. We may face hardships, but we are promised a home in heaven as faithful children of God. John 14, 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Today, I want us to look at 10 things. I want to suggest 10 things that will help us to keep our mind on things above, that will help us to have our minds on spiritual matters and not the troubles of this world. The first thing I want to recommend is seek first a home in heaven. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. Now you might say that seems obvious. Of course we should seek first a home in heaven. But how many people actually practice it? We know it. Subconsciously we know it. But do we actually practice it? This is the most important thing we can do in our lives. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? It's the most important thing we can do in our lives because our souls are of the utmost value. There is nothing in this world that is worth trading my soul for. Again, we know this is important, but do we really practice it? In Ruth 3.9, we see that Ruth makes a marriage proposal to Boaz. And it's very interesting because you have Ruth, the woman, proposing to Boaz, the man, and she's very upfront about this. She does not mince words. She just comes right out and asks him. The point I want to make with that is Ruth knew what she wanted. Not only did she know it, but she went for it. How many of us can say the same thing? We may say we want to seek first a home in heaven, but are we really practicing it? Are we really going for it? Have we decided each and every Sunday, I will be in services. It's not a question. I've already decided it. There's no doubt about it. When I go on vacation, have I decided we are going to be at services, even on vacation? We're going to find a place to worship, and we're going to be there. Have you decided when you get your paycheck that you're going to give a portion of that to the Lord? There should be no question about these things. Our minds should be on things eternal and not of things in this world. We need to seek first a home in heaven. Number two, we need to study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. In the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 5.12-14, we learn that the Hebrews are being called out because they don't know the word of God like they should. They should be teachers of the word, but instead they need someone to teach them again what the first principles of God are. We do not but need to let that be said of us. A person is going to be held responsible for what he should know. A person who has been a Christian for 20 years is expected to know a lot more than someone who has just become a Christian. We understand that, but God understands that also. Studying will help us in our Christian lives. It will help us not to sin. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 11. The word of God brings us comfort. One of the instructors at school made the point that we have Christians who don't pray and they don't study like they should. And then they wonder why they are struggling in life. They wonder why they are always upset, why things always seem so down. 
If you are not going to study and pray as children of God, what do you expect? He's given us his word to provide answers, to give us comfort. He's given us an avenue to talk to him. Those are opportunities we need to take advantage of. Number three, we need to pray. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Have you ever thought about what a blessing it is to talk to the creator of this universe? We have the opportunity to talk to God at any moment. Think if you got to meet a personal hero of yours. Maybe it's a former president, a sports athlete, a writer, you name it. We would consider that a great honor. We would be on our best behavior, and we would treat that person with the utmost respect. But what's better than that? As children of God, we can go to our Heavenly Father in prayer at any moment, and he will hear us. The righteous prayer, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, James 5, 16. That has got to be one of the most encouraging verses in the scriptures. We have the blessing of prayer, and it is something we need to take advantage of. Number four, we need to work to become better. Again, this can go back to Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. We need to constantly be studying. We need to constantly be growing as Christians. Brother Kyle Butt, who works with Apologetics Press, he has a sermon online. And in this sermon, he makes the point that we have Christians... We have people who are 12 years old, and they can study the Bible and learn it well enough to know everything they need to do to become Christians. But that same 12-year-old can study the Bible every single day for the rest of his life and never cease learning. We can always grow as Christians. We need to constantly be trying to become better. We need to become better fathers, husbands, wives, daughters, Better students, maybe, if you're in school. We need to be seeking to be better Christians. We need to strive to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Number five, we need to teach others the gospel. Now, this goes without saying, again, the work of a Christian, part of the things we are supposed to do is teach. But why do we teach? What is the purpose for it? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.10 And we will be judged. What will we be judged by? Jesus said the words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. That's why it is so important that we know the word of God. Why we study the word of God and we teach it to others. Because on that day, the words that are in this book, I'm going to be judged by it. And I want to find a home in heaven. I want to be told, well done, thy good and faithful servant, and not depart from me, for I never knew you. We need to know God's word. He's given to us, given it to us. All we have to do is open it and read it. And we need to teach for our love for fellow man. The golden rule tells us to do unto others as we would have them do to us. Think, what if you had a disease, and I knew about it, but I didn't tell you about it? Would you be upset? Think if I had a cure for the coronavirus, but I didn't say a word to anyone. Would y'all be upset with me? You think a lot of people would be unhappy about that? Of course they would, because I have something that can help so many people, and I'm just neglecting to tell them. But as children of God, we have the word to save people from eternal damnation, and we're going to sit there and not tell anyone about it? We need to tell people out of the love in our hearts for them. We should love fellow man, and the love we have should compel us to teach. Number six, we need to be humble. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination. And the first thing we read on that list is a proud look. Proverbs 6, 16 and 17. The Apostle Paul told us to follow him as he followed Christ. Now, was the Apostle Paul a humble man? Absolutely he was. The Apostle Paul said that he was least of the apostles. The Apostle Paul said he is the chief of sinners, 1 Corinthians 15.9. The man who wrote a good majority of the New Testament, 
a man who's known as one of the greatest missionaries ever, said that he was the chief of sinners. 1 Peter 5, 5-6. through six. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. We need to seek to be humble. Number seven, we need to count our blessings. Try this. Keep a notebook beside your bed, and every night before you go to bed, write down three blessings each night, and see if it changes your perspective any. There's an article on Forbes.com called Seven Scientifically Proven Reasons, Seven Scientifically Proven Benefits of Gratitude That Will Motivate You to Give Thanks Year-Round. The article is by Amy Morin, and in this she says, Gratitude opens the door to more relationships. Gratitude improves physical health. Gratitude improves psychological health. Gratitude enhances empathy and reduces aggression. Grateful people sleep better. Gratitude improves self-esteem, and gratitude increases mental health. There are benefits to being grateful, and as children of God, we have so much we can be grateful for. We have Christian brothers and sisters. You think about it. Some people don't have a good physical family. They might have a bad relationship with their parents, with their siblings, or they might not even know their family. But a blessing of being a child of God is we have the church family, a family that should love one another. We already discussed the avenue of prayer and what a blessing that is. As children of God, we, have, we are able to find a home in heaven. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God has been so very good to us, and we have so much in which we can be thankful. Number eight, we need to care about others. Again, Luke 6.31, the golden rule. We need to do unto others as we would have them do to us. We should care about others. Think about how much different this world would be if people truly cared for one another. How many of the problems in our world would go away if people truly loved and cared for one another? I think that would solve a great majority of our problems. In Matthew 25, 34 through 46, the final judgment scene is being pictured. And I won't take the time to read the whole passage today, but in this, we see that the people who took care of those in need, those are the people who received salvation. But those who neglected those in need, we're told to depart. It is so important that we take care of one another and that we care and love each other. It is a commandment. It is something that a child of a God, child of God must do. If the church is not going to care for its members and for those in the world, why would we expect the world to care? If the church is not going to reach out to one another, why would we expect the world to be any different? We're supposed to be God's chosen people. We're supposed to be the light of the world, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. We got to set the example. We got to put our best foot forward. Number nine, we need to become more involved in the local congregation. Again, reach out to others. Build relationships. In Acts 2, 46, we read, And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Now, this is not the Lord's Supper here, but rather yet this is the brethren fellowshipping with one another. We should love and care for each other. Imagine with me, picture with me a congregation that when church lets out, everyone just walks right out the door. Nobody talks to each other. They're just here to get the Sunday routine over with. And as soon as church service is over, they're out ASAP. There is something wrong with that. We should love each other. We should, we're going to share the same home one day. How are we going to share the same home for all eternity, but yet here on this earth, we're not going to spend time with each other and care about each other? Seek to serve. Try to help the congregation to grow. Number 10, 
we need to be servants. Being a servant is one of the most it's one of the most special things a Christian can do. A servant is somebody who serves God and not man. But we serve God by serving man. Galatians 1.10 To be a servant, we have to be focused on others, and we have to try and help them. Philippians 2, 3 and 4 To be a good servant, we have to be willing to serve. Matthew 10 42. If we want to be a good servant, we cannot be complaining servants. Luke 17, 7 through 10, and 1 Peter 4, 8 and 9. A servant is somebody who is hard working. <clears throat> a servant is somebody who is hard working. Colossians 3, 22. A true servant of God is somebody who is observant and alert. Philippians 2, 3 and 4. A servant is is somebody who is faithful, Luke 17, 10. We need to be servants in the kingdom. We need to constantly, constantly be looking to help others. Jesus, the Son of God, in John chapter 13, washed his disciples' feet. If the Son of God is going to wash his disciples' feet, how much more should I do? I want us to keep in mind these 10 things that we have talked about today. Matthew 6:33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. This is the most important goal we can have. If this is our priority, everything else should fall into place. We do not know what we may be facing. We may be entering into uncertainty. We read, therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Matthew 6, 31 and 32. I want you to particularly notice that phrase, though. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. What is the point of that phrase? What is Jesus saying? He's saying that the world is the one who worries. But children of God should not worry. Why? Because we are children of God. God is almighty in power. Just remember that. When you're struggling, when you're going through hardships, remember that God is almighty in power. In Genesis 8-1, the Bible tells us, And God remembered Noah. What does that mean? Did the almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing God forget who Noah was? Absolutely not. We know that's not what it's saying. What it's saying is that God took care of Noah. God remembered Noah in the time he was going through, and he watched after him. Does God take care of us today? Absolutely he does. For God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. God has been so very good to us. It is true that I do not know what this life may hold, but as a child of God, we can know that our futures are secure. Again, John 14, 3. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where you are, that where I am, there ye may be also. The Lord is has prepared a place to all the faithful children of God. It may be the case that you're here today and you're not a New Testament Christian. And you want that hope, you want the comfort that the Christian life provides. You want to be able to live a life where you can say the same words the Apostle Paul said when he said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You don't want to be burdened with the troubles of the world. You want to know you have a home promised in heaven. If you're here today and you're in that situation, you must first hear the word of God, Romans 10, 17. You must believe it. You must believe the word of God, Mark 16, 16. You must repent of your sins, Acts 2, 38. You must confess your faith in Christ, Romans 10, 9 and 10. And you must be baptized for the remission of your sins, Acts 2, 38 
Baptism is what saves us, 1 Peter 3, 21. If you're here today and you say, I have done these things, I have obeyed the gospel, but I have fallen away, and you need to make things right and ask for the public prayers of the congregation, we encourage you to come forward as we stand and sing the invitation song. and 24. We have a very good number present this morning. We want to thank each of you for your attendance. And to those of you who are visiting with us, we're glad that you're here and we invite you to worship with us at every opportunity that you may have. And we want to thank those of you who have participated in our service online, either Facebook or YouTube or on Ben Loman TV. And our hope is that very shortly you'll be able to be back with us and worship with us in person. Brother Brandon, thank you. A very good lesson. And we appreciate the desire that you have to serve God and to teach God's word for your livelihood. And we just pray that you'll st straighten Brother Bobby out down in Memphis. Keep him going. He needs, he needs a little encouragement every now and then. But uh, 
All of those of you who would like to listen to Brother Brandon again, be here around 1.45 to 2 this afternoon. Our Bible Bowl uh, will be here, and Brother uh, Brandon will be doing the preaching at that time. And then also, young people, remember your hay program at 5. Uh, are they going to meet, the young people meet here or at Central? 4.30. 4.30, all the young people meet here at 4.30 for that program. This morning begins a new quarter for our Bible class program, and we have a couple of changes. The first change, we are starting a new class for girls only. And this class will be for those girls who are at the age probably 16, 17, through age 25, and you'll meet in room number 14, which is the room over here to my right, and Sister Barbara Sane will be teaching that class. So all you girls, you, you can get in there and talk or do what uh, girls do. But anyway, this is for the girls only. And also, this quarter, we're going to resume our adult class uh, two, which meets down in the fellowship room. And Brother Tony Lawrence will be in that class, and he will be teaching from the book of Proverbs. And in the auditorium, Brother Tim Fisher will be teaching the auditorium class, and he will be teaching from the book of Hebrews. I want to remember those who are sick, send them cards or call them as we have the opportunity and remember them daily in our prayers, and let's give them a little joy as they suffer through some things in their life at this time. And remember the Bible Bowl again, or 145 or 2, the hay at 5, and then this evening at 6 p.m., uh, our evening worship service. We'll sing this song and be led in our dismissal prayer. I am I. pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this beautiful Lord's Day and for sparing our lives down to this present moment of time. We're so thankful we've had the time and opportunity to come here and study and hear and partake the Lord's Supper and sing these songs of praises. We pray that everything that's been said and done has been in complete accordance to thy word. Now as we're about to separate, we please, please watch over us care for us, bring us back the next point of time. This is our prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>